All right, so in this video, I'm going to go over 10 things I learned by generating over $4.1 million uh, in sales pipeline with cold email. My name is Leonardo, and these are some of the results that we got by sending cold emails for our clients. Here's how we helped uh, our client generate over $4 million uh, in sales pipeline in less than four months. Here's the campaign, one of the campaigns we run for them, and here are the uh, testimonials as well. Here's how we're helping. We launch marketing close three to four new clients per month in a saturated market. Here's the uh, client testimonial and case study as well, some testimonials, um, screenshots as well here, and campaigns as well. And here's how we helped LAL generate over 72 interest prospects in the first six weeks. Now it's 84 at the moment. Uh, and here are some more client testimonials. For example, our client who signs the first deal in the first eight days of running a campaign. And here's another client who signs the first deal on the first uh, book call uh, from our campaigns. Now, with that being said, let's get straight into it. Now, the first thing that I learned is that deliverability is the most important factor with your cold emails and you just can't neglect that. Like you just can't ignore deliverability. And you might be asking yourself, why does it matter so much, right? Why is it so important? Well, it's because deliverability is basically whether you are landing in the primary inbox or the spam inbox of your prospects. So obviously if your email lands in spam, no one sees your email, no one uh, will actually reply to your email. So it's basically pointless to run campaigns at that point, right? So that's um, that's basically why durability is so important. You, you just can't ignore that. How do you determine if you have a durability issue? Because durability is very important, but you don't, it's not always black and white. You can see very easily if you have a durability issue. It's often very hidden and you just can't, understand that very easily so uh if you want well, to determine if you have the really issue you just look at the reply rate of your campaigns right if your reply rates are below one percent then uh you probably have a durability issue and you might want to start looking into replacing accounts or uh running the durability tests uh, and uh inbox placement tests right now the um, important thing here is that one percent reply rate has to be not the average of your campaign, but this has to be the reply rate you're getting in these days, right? So for example, let's pick this, this, this one campaign, right? Now let's say you're using Smartly. This is what you're gonna see uh, in your Smartly campaign. This is the reply rate that we got in this campaign, 14%. If you've been running your campaign for let's say three months and at the beginning you were getting fine reply rate, you were getting let's say 14%, but right now you assume you have the really issue because you're not getting as many replies as you used to. You go to look at your campaign, you see that you still have 14% reply rate. Now, you shouldn't look at this number unless it's a very recent campaign. And this is because this is the average, right? This is the average. So let's say you've been running your campaign for three months. This is the average reply rate that you've gone um, across all of these three months, right? So you need, you need to look at the numbers here in uh, light blue or green. These are the replies, as you can see here, um, applied. So you need to look at those numbers right here to determine what's your uh, true reply rate. But just keep that in mind because Smartly is going to count the average reply rate and not the reply rate you're actually getting these days, right? So let's move forward. Now, uh, reply rate, how you determine the reliability issue by looking at the reply rate. How do you fix a reliability issue? So let's say you are getting less than 1% reply rate and you uh, understand you have the really issue, your email landing spam. How do you fix that right now? You run some tests, for example, uh, mail reach tests, uh, inbox placement tests, uh, and the easiest thing actually is to replace domains and mailboxes. So if you're not sure, just do that. Just replace domains and mailboxes. It is 10 times easier, 10 times faster than just running multiple tests and not even being sure if you are actually landing a spam with a primary inbox. So just replace domains and replace mailboxes. They're pretty cheap. So uh, just do that and you will be fine, right? So how do you never run into a deliverability issue again? How do you ensure you will never run into a deliverability issue again? So I made a whole video about this and this is um, this is the video. Basically, I walk you through exactly what you need to do to set up a cold email infrastructure that lets you send over 2,000 emails per day without any spam. Um, and this is basically walk you through exactly what you need to do, all the records you need to set up, everything you need to do, how to buy domains, how to buy mailboxes, how to set everything out, how to do warm up, how to do your ramp up of your sending volume, uh, how many emails to send, how many warm up emails, cold emails to send, everything. I cover everything in this video. So I highly recommend you to check out this video if you're interested in setting up cold emails for infrastructure um, that lets you send a ton of emails without any spam. But basically, 
this is to put it briefly, this is what you need to do, right? Uh, technical setup, you need to configure some records such as VMark, DKM, and SPF records. You need to warm up your mailboxes for at least two weeks. We recommend doing that for three weeks, but two weeks is fine. And then you need to gradually increase um, the cold email sending volume. So you don't just do two weeks of warm up and then you start at 30 cold emails per day uh, on day 15. You uh, gradually increase and ramp up the sending volume and you limit to 30 to 35 cold emails per day per mailbox. Actually, I recommend this to be lower. I recommend this to be 20 to 25. Also, write relevant emails to a relevant audience because if your prospects are interested and reply to your emails with a positive, in a positive way, Google and Outlook are going to actually recognize that behavior and are going to basically reward you and make more of your emails to land in the primary inbox of your prospects instead of spam because I recognize those emails are actually uh, valuable, right? And people respond to them and they're not spam, right? But basically, email content, you need to run your email copy through a spam checker. For example, I think it's spamchecker.codes, the website. And then, so to, to avoid spam trigger words, and then you need to avoid using links or images in initial emails. I actually recommend to not use the links and images in any emails, uh, not just initial emails. And then use text only emails, avoid using HTML. This is crucial. Now, when it comes to best practices, um, you also need to uh, keep that in mind. You need to validate your lead list uh, before running your campaigns uh, to keep the bounce rates uh, low, possibly below 1%. Uh, this is why I recommend below 1% reply rate or I'm sorry, uh, bounce rate. And then you need to ensure emails are relevant as I said and target to the appropriate audience to generate positive engagement, with, which helps uh, avoiding spam filters because Google and Outlook will reward you uh, and will reward your campaign if they see that your emails are actually legit and they're not spam. All right, so the second thing that I learned is that the offer is king, right? This is, this is the second most important thing and second most important factor uh, in your cold email campaigns of course, after the ability. So why does the offer matter so much in the first place? So the answer is that most people just respond to a cold email um, just because there's a, there's a good offer in there. So if they see there is some value uh, in your offer, in your cold email, they will respond back and they will uh, send you a positive reply. Otherwise, there's no other reason why people should actually respond to a cold email, right? So when you have a good offer, actually you improve all your uh, metrics when it comes to email uh, email campaigns, but also like general marketing and sales as well. So when you have a good offer, you improve your reply rate on cold emails, your positive reply rate. So how many uh, interested leads you get, your call book rate, uh, your show up rate as well, your close rate and your uh, retention. You even improve your retention because if you have a good offer, then people will um, keep staying with you for uh, longer. The next thing to, to look at is how do you create an offer that works with cold outbound email and works in general with cold outbound perspective. So the first thing you need to look at is market research. So this is the first thing you need to do uh, is actually understanding what your ideal clients and what your prospects actually want and need. Uh, what are their end results, their outcomes, their goals, what are their needs, what they are struggling with, what are their problems, problems, right? And only then you follow this offer framework. So you come up with a specific outcome. So clearly defined tangible results you can deliver to your clients. For example, instead of generic marketing services, um, you can highlight uh, delivering an additional $300,000 a month of revenue. This is literally what we did for uh, our client we launched marketing. And then conditions, set clear uh, achievable conditions such as four to five X return on ad spend. This is again for the launch marketing example. This is a marketing agency uh, offering Facebook ads to e-commerce brands, pretty saturated niche. And after that, I'm going to show you what the results were uh, by just changing the offer. Uh, so again, conditions, uh, set achievable conditions uh, through which your clients can get the realistic results that you uh, claim in a specific outcome. And then guarantee. Guarantee is is optional, but actually you're going to you're going to book like realistically five to 10 X more calls by just adding guarantee. Guarantee is basically a risk reversal element. Like for example, it can be a 30 day money back guarantee. The guarantee can also be implicit. So for example, if you offer something on a performance basis, that's also a guarantee because you, you only get paid once you get results or some sort of results. So that's also a guarantee. Um, so typically what tends to work the best is performance based work and um, money back guarantees, okay? So, and then you need to come up with a unique mechanism. This is especially important um, with markets that are very sophisticated and very saturated, uh, where the unique mechanism actually matters. Uh, because if you are in a blue ocean, 
you, and nobody's really doing cold email for your specific offer, you don't really need to have a unique mechanism. If you, if you just slap a specific outcome, conditions, guarantee, time frame on a cold email, it will work um, even without a unique mechanism. But for example, if you are doing Facebook ads, e-commerce brands, you need to come up with a unique mechanism. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Uh, like if you just say we're, we're going to do your Facebook ads and we're going to get you this result um, without our Facebook ad system, that, that's not going to work. You need to, to you need to come up with a unique system or unique mechanism. So how do you determine whether your offer works or uh, doesn't work? So you need to do some split testing here because you need to send at least 2,000 to 5,000, ideally 10,000 cold emails to fully test the offer. If you get more than 1% reply rate, this is key. You can actually, actually exclude the, the relay issue that we were talking about earlier. Here, if you get less than 1% reply rate, it's likely a delivery issue. Um, and so if you get a higher higher reply rate than that, you can easily exclude the delivery issue. And so after that, if you, if you see no or very few positive replies, then you might have an offer problem. Now, this is very, this depends on, on a few different factors. This depends on the offer. This depends on how accurate your, your cold email campaign was, how accurate your targeting was, how uh, well the scripts were written. So, but this typically um, can give you an understanding of whether your offer works or, or doesn't work. So typically what I do is I recommend you to split test a bunch of different offers at the same time, the same campaign with similar scripts, just with different offers. So you can see the delta, the difference between uh, the positive reply rate that, that and the calls that those offers uh, book for you. So from there, you can easily get an understanding of what offer you know works best. So if you, if you don't get replies, if you don't get positive replies, um, if you don't get calls booked from your offer, you might have an offer problem. So how do you fix an offer problem? Well, you go back to the, to the drawing board and you need to start again by doing market research. For example, you might come up with, with some different pain points that you uh, ignored in the beginning, or you might come up with some different needs of your, of your clients and uh, tweak the offer and change it based on that data, based on uh, the feedback you receive from prospects or from current clients as well. And so you just test a bunch of different offers and see uh, which uh, one works the best, right? So by just um, changing our offer, we went from booking one to two sales calls per month for our client to helping our client close three to four new deals consistently um, a month in a such great market, which is e-commerce. And that being said, the second lesson that I learned is that targeting must be accurate. So you can, again, neglect targeting. Um, so you might be asking yourself, why does it matter so much? And you can have the best offer in the world, but if you target the wrong leads, you're not going to get good results, right? If you target, um, for example, if you have um, a Facebook ad offer, you, you do Facebook ads for e-commerce brands that you're actually targeting SaaS companies and you are uh, talking about how you can increase or make more money for e-commerce brands in your emails, but you're sending that email to, to SaaS companies, you can pretty easily understand that's not going to work, right? So uh, targeting must be accurate. So how can you have the accurate targeting? You need to first define your ICP and then compile a relevant lead list of your ideal prospects. I made an entire video on how to do that here, um, linked here. This is a video on exactly what you need to do to be able to uh, come up with a specific ideal client profile and then how you can scrape a relevant lead list of your ideal prospects. I literally walk you through exactly what you need to do in the entire process that we use. So how can you define an ICP briefly if you don't want to watch the video? Now, the first thing I, I recommend, and this is probably the most important one, is analyzing existing clients that are actually good, that you actually enjoy working with, and you identify common traits like business size, industry location, technologies, needs, um, problems, whatever else, um, and then you come up with an ICP from there. You might also consider, well, you should also consider your offer uh, and your, your service benefits. So, and then from there, you determine who could benefit the most from your service and from your offer and who faces the relevant challenges that your product and your offer solves, right? Another thing you should look at is market research. So you can run surveys, reports, and interviews to potential prospects, potential clients to identify uh, interested prospects and see what, who could be uh, your, your potential buyer, right? And then uh, after you've done all of that, you need to create a detailed profile, which is your ICP, which consists of a few different things like industry or niche, if you wanna um, dive even deeper. And then job title, who you're going to reach out to, location, uh, HP location and contact location as well, very important. 
company size in terms of employee account and then technologies used, right? You can you can run very interesting angles by just targeting by technologies. So um, this is this is optional, but this can lead to very good results. How can you determine if your targeting is wrong or not relevant? Well, you just go through the lead list and manually determine if the leads are relevant uh, to receive your your outreach message. So you you need to kind of look at the, the situation from your prospect's point of view. Does that make sense? Like if you if someone reached out with your offer. Uh, to you and you were the prospect, would that make sense? Like, would you reply to an email? W would you be relevant to receive that offer? And so you need to, to ask yourself those questions to see if the lead list that you came up with and the ICP you came up with as well uh, are actually relevant to your angle and to your offer. So the first lesson that I learned is the angle matters. So what is an angle in the first place? Well, the angle is the approach that you use in your cold email campaign. For example, you might directly pitch your offer um, or offering a case study. These are two completely different angles that you can lead with. Um, so why why does having a good angle actually matter? There are countless reasons why your uh, angle matters and why you should also split test angles. Um, the first thing is your market's level of sophistication. Then you also have your prospects awareness stage, but also your prospects business specifically and your prospects personal life as well in some cases, right? So for example, if you have a high uh, sophistication level, if your market is highly sophisticated, you might want to lead with a different angle, with a softer angle, instead of directly pitching your offer because your market has heard that offer countless times and they will not resonate with that offer anymore, right? So that's just, a, just an example. So how do you come up with an angle that works with uh, cold email? Well, the answer here as well is you just need to test a bunch of different stuff. So think about five to 10 most relevant approaches or angle you could use um, and you could use to reach out to your ideal clients with your email campaign. And basically you just do split testing from there. So how do you determine uh, an approach? First of all, you uh, determine the approach by looking at your prospect's current situation, your prospect's problem, and your solution to that problem. So the angle is literally determined by this, the current situation of your prospects, um, with also what their problems are, what they're struggling with, and your uh, solution, what your solution is to their problems um, that can help them, right? So from there, you determine if each angle is good and makes sense. So you need to come up with five to 10 different angles uh, based on this um, approach right here. And then you determine if each angle uh, is gonna make sense, right? So you need to ask yourself uh, some questions. For example, does it solve a problem? Is it a nice to have or a need to have? Um, is it something that your prospects um, like or need, right? Obviously, it's better to make it a need than a, a nice thing to have. And then is the offer that you're pitching in the angle good? Uh, would your prospects reply to that offer? If you received a, a, a similar offer, would you reply to that email? Um, and then, yeah, basically, why should someone respond and be interested in what you have to say, right? You need to ask yourself these questions. If like is is the angle relevant with the targeting? Um, you know, is are other prospects relevant to uh what you're what you're offering in the angle what you're offering in the email? Do they believe you? So do you have case studies, social proof, testimonials? Do we have a landing page? Do we have a um website or uh, content online where they can see that you're actually credible and you're not you're not a scammer? If the answer uh, to those questions is always yes, then you can test the angle. If it's not, then you uh, just remove the angle and come up with a different one. Right? So test the angle and how do you split test the angle? Well, I made an entire video on how to do that. Um, this is this basically walks you through the entire process, and ex the exact process that we use to split test uh, variables in cold email campaigns. And specifically, the angle um, is one of the most important variables that you should sp split test in your cold email campaigns. So this video walks you through exactly what you need to do um, to run split tests and get accurate data as well, because you could run split tests um, randomly, but if you don't get accurate data and if you don't get like real data, it doesn't even make sense to do the split test in the first place, right? So this video shows you how to do that. Now, the fifth uh, thing that I learned is that you need volume with cold email. You need volume with, in general, album prospecting. So what do you mean with volume? Uh, well, volume is simply sending a significant and relevant amount of outreach. Significant is, uh, well, many emails and relevant are uh, relevant to your, uh, your current situation, right? And your angle that the angle you also want to take, right? So why do you need high volume in the first place? Well, this basically is tied to split testing. So 
To be able to correctly split test angles and variance, you need a minimum of a thousand leads contacted per angle, right? So let's say that you come up with, as we just said, five different approaches or five different angles that you want to split test to see which one works best. You need to, to, to find 5,000 leads to send that angle to, right? To be able to, uh, well, correctly split test and ac get accurate, accurate data, right? And then make decisions based on that. So, um, well, high volume, you, do, you need to send a high volume. So how do you send a high volume of cold outreach uh, emails while still having high literality and not letting it spam? This is the same video uh, that I showed you earlier. This is basically um, a video that walks you through how to come up with a sending infrastructure, how to set up a sending infrastructure that allows you to send a high volume of cold outreach emails uh, without letting it spam. Because obviously, if you're running a spam, none of this matters, right? First thing you need to look at is literality, then offer, uh, then targeting, then angle, and then volume. You need volume to test everything else, but if your deliverability is not good, then it just doesn't make any sense, right? So always keep that in mind. So the sixth uh, lesson here is you can skip split testing. So you might be asking yourself, you know, do I even need to split test five to 10 different angles? Do I even need to, to split test different offers and, and different target marks and different scripts and all of that stuff? Is it even necessary to get results in the first place from your cold email campaigns? Is it even necessary to um, you know book calls and, and close deals from cold outbound perspective? And the answer is simply yes, right? So you can skip split testing because if you don't split test anything, if you don't split test um, variables, offers, angles, scripts, target markets in your cold email campaign, you're just going to get worse results over time. So let's say you just run one script, one offer, same offer, same target market, same script, same everything. Uh, over time, this script and this specific campaign is going to is going to just get worse and worse results, right? The reason why this happens is that everyone else is actually doing split test. If you don't split test anything, your competitors and everyone else is going to overtake you. They're going to get all the results and you're not. That is basically the reason why you need to do uh, split testing. You just can't skip this part. So how do you split test correctly? This is the uh, same video that I showed you earlier. It shows you exactly what you need to do uh, to split test correctly and basically everything that you need to um, be careful of when doing split tests. Now, the seventh lesson is that replying immediately to interested leads is super important. And now why is this so crucial? Well, the longer you wait to respond, the less interested your potential customers will be and the more likely you are to lose them. So this graph shows you basically the interest of your prospects and uh, time. Well, your, your prospect level of interest decreases over time. You need to, to get them here, basically. This is when they reply back. This is the moment they reply back to your email uh, with um, interest, of course. They are very interested, they are very engaged with your offer and with your email. And so you need to get them here. You need to reply back within five minutes. This is what I recommend. Because if you reply back within five minutes, you're going to get them here when they're still very interested and still very engaged. And they're more open to receiving more information, getting a case study, uh, getting on a call with you and at the end of the day closing as a paid client. If you reply back, let's say after two hours, which might be here, you're going to get them here where their, their reply or their uh, interest has already decreased by a lot, right? So you might not be able to get them on a call and your conversion rate is just going to get worse. It's just going to be lower, right? So you need to reply back as, as soon as possible, ideally within five minutes, as I say here. So... Also, if you're, if you're obviously, if you're not glued to your uh, inbox all day long, you can set up uh, smart lead notifications on smart lead AI. You are able to set up webhooks so that you're going to get a notification every time you receive a positive res response. So you can go back to the inbox and reply immediately, right? So set up notifications, uh, get notified for positive replies and reply immediately to uh, interest leads because that's going to increase your conversion by a lot. So what should your reply uh, look like, right? I recommend you to um, set up templates in your email sending platform. Uh, Smartly allows you to do that or in your master inbox on, or in your Gmail inbox if you're using it to reply to interested leads. So I recommend you to set up templates so that you don't have to uh, write the email reply every time you need to respond to an interested prospect. So in this video that I made, I walk you through basically what is the reply framework and, and template that we used to book hundreds of sales calls for our clients. And this is what we use um, to respond to interest leads who want more info uh, about our client's offer. I also walk you through some tips and tricks for basically inbox management, how you can turn as many uh, positive replies uh, into uh, calls booked on your calendar.
So the eighth lesson is you need to solve one problem at a time. And I see this all the time with people not having much success with their calling campaigns, uh, having a bunch of issues and not knowing, you know, where to go, not even being able to determine what is going wrong with their calling campaigns. And then they just said the call email doesn't work. So the reality is that those people should just focus on solving one problem at a time in order of importance, right? So if the campaign isn't working, isn't getting the results that you want, seek and solve problems in order of importance. This is the order of importance. First, you have the reliability. So you need to first make sure that you are landing in primary most of your prospects. Because if you're not, if you're in spam, you can't worry about a show up rate, a cool show up rate, right? Because you don't have that problem in the first place, right? So if you have a durability issue at the same time, you shouldn't worry about why you're not getting uh, positive responses because you're, because you're not getting responses in the first place. Once you solve the durability issue and you're still not satisfied with your email campaigns, you should look at your reply rate right here, right? So after that, well, you have your positive reply rate, you have your call book rate. So from interested leads to call uh, calls booked, then you show up rate, and then your uh, discovery, if you do a two call close, discovery to demo call uh, rate, conversion rate, and then your close rate um, at the end of the fund. You can't just assume you have a sales problem because you're not closing deals while your emails are simply not landing in the primary inbox. If you're not landing in the primary inbox, you can wonder why you're not closing deals, right? Because you're not getting responses in the first place. You're not getting your emails to be read in the first place. So the ninth lesson is that scaling volume implicates scaling inputs. So what I mean by this is that if you 10x your volume, you're going to have to 10x the number of scripts you write and test, the number of leads in your cold email list, the number of accounts and the size of your cold email sending infrastructure. And this is a very interesting concept, but I've never heard someone to talk about this. This is the volume you're sending with your cold email campaign. And this is the uh, meetings that you book or deposit replies or leads or these are your close any type of result that you get from cold email campaigns, right? So now let's say you are here, you're sending 100 emails um, per day. This is your volume. You want to scale to 1,000 emails per day, which might be here. First thing you need to look at is that you need to 10x your um, sending infrastructure, right? So you need to get basically 10x more, 10 times more accounts, right? Now, the thing here is that if you just do that, this is this is basically the graph of your what, what your results will look like, right? The growth of your results will decrease over time, even if you send 10 times more emails than 1,000, right? If you send 10,000 10, emails a day, you are here, and there is the delta, the difference between those two is not that huge. So this happens because you don't split test anything else. You don't split test scripts, you don't split test more angles or more stuff, right? If you send 10 times more emails, you need to send and you need to write and test 10 times more scripts and angles and 10x everything, right? This is what's gonna happen if you actually do that, right? If you 10x your inputs in terms of both volume and scripts you test and angles that you test and stuff that you do and inputs, everything else, this like results are going to be linear. The, the growth of your results is going to be linear like this, right? And the 10th lesson is that leveraging positive feedback loop is key. And so this means learning from the mistakes and the feedback that you receive from your cold email campaigns and iterating based on that, right? And taking action based on that, right? Why is this important? Well, if you don't do this, you will keep making the same mistakes over time and your performance of the campaigns is just going to um, decrease and, and get worse over time, right? So how do you do this? Well, it's a, a three-step process, right? It's a very simple process. You first determine a feedback. So for example, the replies you receive, you understand what it means, and then you take action and iterate based on the feedback, right? I prepared a couple of examples here to uh, drive this home, but basically, for example, you might mostly receive unsubscribe replies from your Polyma campaign. And so this probably means that your prospects understand that it's an automated email while you're sending. And so emails sound too robotic and too unnatural, right? Therefore, you take action, and you rewrite your scripts to make them sound more natural. That's it. Example number two, you receive too low reply rate, right? As we just said here, if you receive a reply rate that is lower than 1%, it probably means that you have a durability issue, right? So that means that it probably means that your emails are landing in the spam folder of your prospects and not the primary inbox. So therefore, you take action and you run inbox placement tests and spam tests 
to determine uh, the deliverability of your mailboxes and possibly you replace the mailboxes and replace the domains, right? It's a very simple process, but somehow very few people do this. That's it for this video. I hope you got some value from it. If you need someone to implement a cool email system for you to get your leads, meetings booked and help you close deals on a performance basis while you only pay for qualified prospects to show up at a call with you, then book a call with me below and we'll see if we can help you. That means I appreciate you watching until the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one.